Hey guys, it's Troy here, and guess what? Another pen mail day. And you know, here's a video I didn't plan on recording yet, and there's a simple reason. I'm expecting another pen here that's going to actually be showing up in the mail, oh, in about 12 hours or less. And I'm just, you know, it's the middle of the night, and I haven't been able to sleep, so <laughs> you got me doing a pen mail video. So here I am. Uh, so I'm going to bring you at least three of them. And, you know, quite honestly, the other pen that's going to be arriving is a modern pen. And I thought about doing a video just on it. And, okay, I'll do it that way. But uh, here I've got actually two modern pens and a vintage pen. So let's start with this one here. Um, this is a brand that I'm a little bit familiar with. Um, I did a video a while back on an Owasso uh, that was advertised on social media uh, and uh, basically you had a, a standing inkwell and, and a, a pen that would fill from the bottom and yeah, it was kind of a neat little thing, a um, little unwieldy to get filled, a very different uh, sort of filling system. Uh, I'll put a link to that particular video. Uh, but I saw this, and i, I got to give credit to my friend Chris Rapp, uh, who actually did a review of this particular pen. I'd never really heard it, heard of it, until I caught his video as I was scrolling through on YouTube one day. So I figured I'd go ahead and pick it up. And uh, an Owasso K016, this is a retractable pen. So if you're familiar with... Uh, a lot of the others that are out there. Just recently I did a video um, on a retractable uh, Chinese made pen that was fairly inexpensive. Well, I've also got several other retractables and uh, quite honestly I've got uh, one that's probably going to be on the way sometime soon. So I went ahead and ordered this one. It wasn't very expensive and I haven't even opened it yet. All right? Everything on here is in Chinese. I'm not going to show you all the translations of all these, but you know I did use Google Translate and come up with it. Uh, but essentially, the only thing that's um, in English is the K016 for the model. And then there was something I saw, oh yeah, right the future, right down here at the bottom of the package on a, a seal on that package. Uh, but I'm going to eventually take this out sometime soon, play with it, and I'll do a full review of this particular pen, and I'll show you what all the uh, the language that's printed here, what all that means, okay? So like I said, I hadn't even taken it out of the package to play with it yet, but I will. Another Chinese-made pen, and yes, that logo should and name should be familiar to you. Uh, this is one that um, a pen pal of mine had, and he uh, used two different versions of this particular pen to write a letter. I said, all right, I'm going to give it a try. And he'd heard about it from a pen pal of his. So I figured I'd order one, and I got it. And I see some other people who have recently ordered them, but the 9019 Jinhao. Matter of fact, uh, let's see. Right there, you can see number 9019 right there on the cat band. Jinhao. Dad, Dadeo, Dadeo, I'm not really sure. Uh, but the 9019, great big pen, good size pen. And uh, it's got a little heft to it. So if you like larger oversized pens, uh, then this definitely is a contender to add to your collection. Uh, you know, one of the things, I, I got to give credit to um, Jinhao in that they have really improved their product or their product line since I first started uh, finding some of theirs. Uh, years ago when I first started to get into the hobby and um, I had a Waterman Phileas as practically my only fountain pen, I said, I wonder what else is out there. So I started to look on eBay and I found a bunch on fountain pens and I knew relatively nothing about them. So I ended up ordering a Jinhao 450. And I can tell you that over the years I've had some garbage pens that were Chinese made and I've had some quality pens. And I can tell you Jin Hao has been impressing me as of late with better quality products. Uh, that's not to say that they're not still you know, blatantly copying other manufacturers from time to time. Uh, but you know, here's one that I thought was a fairly decent buy. 
you know, it came in this box, and the only thing that you can really read if you were into English is that there's the name, the, the formal name, Shanghai uh, Stationery Company Limited, uh, but, you know, the Jinhao logo on it. And this actually came in a little polymer Ziploc bag at one end, and it had a little sticker on it, and I can't find that thing. You know, it's, you know, it's sort of, you know, a bag like, sort of like that, only like a little Ziploc, and it had a sticker on it with the the model name the 9019 on it uh, but I must have thrown that away or it fell off my desk and or something but I can't find it but I went ahead and ordered this one in the red or the burgundy red and I saw really cool somebody on Instagram had one that was a clear demonstrator and I wish that this was available in a clear demonstrator when I ordered it but hey you know it is what it is but a great big old pen Look at the size of that nib. That's that's like a number eight, maybe. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do a full review of this pen now, but I will eventually, and hopefully sometime soon, get to it. And it is a cartridge converter pen. And what I'll do is I will compare this to some others, like the X159, the old 159. I'll, I'll show you what it's... Um, uh, like on next to a Mont Blanc 149 and some other pens in its class, not necessarily price wise, but definitely in size wise. But look at the size of that ink converter into there. I mean, that is definitely an oversized ink converter, holds a lot of ink. I put like a diamine ancient copper, I think, into this particular pen. And uh, this one came with a fine nib. I was kind of hoping to be able to get like a medium, but no, it was like fine and or extra fine. I ordered a fine. So, close that sucker up. Go ahead and cap it. But that's a good size pen right there. Alrighty, now I'm going to show you um, the most recent addition to uh, the family here. And, you know, I've been collecting Watermans for several years. 1940s was the year that Waterman was making pens a lot like this. You know, it looks like a celluloid, uh, and it's a lever filler. Now, it's a stalwart. S-T-A-L-W-A-R-T. I've got a stalwart in my collection, so you know, it's not like I really wanted one, but the price on this was right. It was like 50 bucks. I figured a 1940s primo condition, I mean the, the, the physical condition on this one was excellent. Um, it had a few scuffs or a few scratches like right there. You can see there's a couple of scuffs right there on the cap. But overall the condition was fantastic. You still got the Waterman's imprint right there. And you come down to almost a square, just a slightly beveled end right there. And you open it up. The nib from the pictures that I saw online was just immaculately clean. So was the section, the feed, all in great shape. So I gave it a shot. I said, what the heck? And if it needs to be restored, that's something that I can do. I really don't have to do much for restoration. I mean, there's a little scuffing right there from the cat going on and off. Uh, but there's really not a lot to do to this pen to get it to really look good, because it already did. So, essentially, I tried, no, I needed to take that sack off. So I opened it up, I replaced the sack. As a matter of fact, I followed the exact instructions that I gave in a video on how to replace an ink sack. And thousands of you people have uh, watched that video, and I do not come at it from a professional perspective. I come at it from a lay person who just kind of does this for fun, not necessarily as a professional. Just keep that in mind when you watch my video. Uh, but anyway... Um, you know, replace dozens and dozens of sacks on lever fillers. I can probably do that in my sleep. Uh, so, this blue, I didn't need a stalwart, but look at how beautiful that blue is. That's what attracted me to this, in addition to the condition that I could tell it was in. So, the, when I opened it up and I took the sack off, parts of the sack were actually still in good condition. Um, but I could tell it really needed a good cleaning. 
so I was able to flush out that section. I didn't even have to knock the nib out. It had been used so little that I was able to give it a good flushing, and I even put it into my ultrasonic cleaner after I gave it a good flushing, and hardly anything came out of it at that point. So it told me I got it really, really good and clean from that uh, nib and that section and that feed uh, just by using some warm water and a bulb syringe. And that sack that I took off from it, parts of it were pliable and parts of it were crunchy. And so I could tell there's probably some dried up ink. Uh, it's starting to ossify a little bit. But um, it peeled off the section really easily. And the new sack went on it very easily. And uh, I was like, cool. And then I did just a little bit of nib work on it because I could. You know, it was... It was just not quite to the point I wanted, so I did a little bit of tine alignment and then polished it off a little bit with a little bit of smoothing. Not much. It only took a, you know, a minute or two, and it was writing fairly well. Now, the Waterman Stalwart. In this book right here, Waterman Past and Present, the first six decades, Max Davis and Gary Lehrer. Um, got to know Gary a little bit at some of the uh, pen shows. Um, I've bought from him uh, a bunch of times in the past. Uh, his widow, I see her at the DC Pen Show, the past couple of them. Uh, and it's, uh, it's always good to see her. But um, So looking at their book, 1940s Pens, and you look over here in the stalwart. Here's the example that they've got of a stalwart. It's in green. Well, here's mine in blue. It's got that single ring on that cap. It's got that same kind of lever, roughly the same shape at the bottom, and it's got that, if you look, all these clips are very similar, but yeah, that's pretty much exactly as advertised, a Waterman stalwart. So just for grins, let's go ahead and uh, see how this big old Jin Hao writes. And I'm not going to do it a tremendous amount because I will do a full video on this. So this is just a pen mail video. But man, that really sits huge in my hand. And I can tell you, it's actually more comfortable than I thought it would be. It does post if you want to have a billy club. Um, not worth posting that cap. You know, it doesn't make it tremendously easy to use. So let's go ahead and just look at the... The Jin Hao. This is the one thing that I'm, I'm probably going to need to do is to flush this pen out really, really well. Because you saw how it skipped right at the beginning? Right there. This is the one problem that I had. Actually, it's not the only problem. I'll tell you another problem here in a minute. But it doesn't like all paper. Believe it or not, on this Rhodia pad, and I've used it on Rhodia, and I've used it on Claire Fontaine, it doesn't so far like the slicker paper, but I'm wondering if I just go ahead and give this thing a really good flushing, if that will help. I, some people recommend that you, in a brand new pen you flush it before you ink it. I'm not one of those people who does that. I'm one of those, I, I want to play with my toy now. So I took it out, inked it right up, Started to play with it. Uh, but I have found from time to time, if it writes a little rough, to go ahead and give it a good flush. So I'm probably going to end up doing that. But the only reason I haven't is because there's still so much ink in here. Um, I didn't really want to pull it apart <laughs> and put it back together. But who knows. So I put in some of this uh, diamine ancient copper. Let's see how well it, uh, let's go this way and see how it looks. Yeah, so it's not tremendously a wet writer. It hasn't been. I've actually worked on this to try to get it just to, to flow a little better without having to flush it out. And I haven't really gotten anywhere with it. But I have used it several times in letter writing. Uh, but I did have some skipping with it. So I'm going to have to do something with this pen. I don't hate it. I like the size of it. I like the ink capacity of it. I like how it feels when I go to use it. One other problem, though, that I run across with this particular pen. Because of its size, I am precluded from using my favorite 
single pen sleeve. It just, uh, it really, that's about as far as it's going to go. So that's not going to work. Okay, so I got out my old trusty pen sleeve or case that I use most often. That's here on my desk. A double pen sleeve. I was using this one just today. But, obviously not with that 9019. That's not going to fit. Now, luckily for me, if I was going to carry it, and I did, I actually have an old Waterman pen case. You see, we got the Waterman W in hexagon on it. Now, much bigger capacity size. So, it actually holds two pens. It came with like two Waterman pens when I first bought it. Um, so that fits. And this is how I had to carry it in a pen case for when I was using this as my daily carry pen. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at this Waterman here. Because like I said, I restored this thing. It's got a gold nib on it. I had a friend of mine ask me about uh, some of my favorite uh, third tier manufacturers hoping to find um, some lower price gold nibs and I've shown you some of those here not too long ago within the past month or so uh, but don't overlook the possibility of a first tier that you may find a good price on it and I, I paid 50 bucks for this piece of gorgiosity so a waterman's Stalwart. I mean, you can see that flex. So you can get some good line variety and um, you know some flex out of it. What did I put into it? Some Waterman's. As a matter of fact, why don't I just reach for the bottle and show you? Some Waterman's Inspired Blue. So there you go. There's my pen mail video. Just so you let you know, the uh, the modern pen that's coming is another Waterman. <laughs> and I've got several um, within that model, so I'll show you there uh, all those together and, and do a uh, comparison just because I can and just because it's on the way. And, you know, it, it was worth, I thought, making it into a, a separate video for that. So here you go. Middle of the night, I'm, you know, I'm trying to fall asleep, not happening, so I'm up doing a video. So here are the three latest editions that have arrived at my home. Two modern Chinese pens and one good old American 1940s vintage Waterman.